My name is Derek Liddington, and uh, I'm from Toronto, Ontario. Uh, the exhibition, sort of the kernel of it, started uh, in a residency uh, at Grey Church, which is uh, a collector's space in Vancouver. And in spending time there, and then uh, spending some time at the collector, collector's ranch, I sort of became really interested in these sort of long, sort of beautiful valleys. And when painting the valleys and these like kind of watercolor sketches with my son, I started realizing that my scale or the, or the sense of scale that I had to my own body was being disrupted by how like kind of grand the landscape was. And that this horizon line and perspectival lines uh, were kind of shifting my sense of scale and body. And so out of that came this idea, uh, this idea of an exhibition that could uh, use ideals of scale and size, uh, time and perspectival lines like a horizon line uh, as a means for looking at painting. So these paintings behind me uh, are all examples of sort of like using both bodies, rotting fruit, organic forms, rust, as a means of sort of like looking at how painting can play a role in observation. Um, and the painting on the floor, for instance, right behind me is an example of something that is like meant to sort of illustrate a horizon line or, or a body, um, but you know, it's flipped uh, so that you look at I look at it topographically, and so that sort of line is sort of shifted, and and your perspective or your relation to it also changes. Um, you know, one of the, one of the things that's important for this exhibition is that it's it's a painting exhibition, and these are paintings. And myself, though I don't um, consider myself uh, a painter, I can I kind of see myself as an artist working in painting, and by that I mean that painting is a sort of subject for the paintings themselves. And I think that they're in and out of the relationship of installation, of performativity, uh, of sculpture. So I sort of see them as um, the visual forms they work in and work with are not just within painting itself. Uh, my background is in performance art, um, and I bring a lot of that, that idea of performativity with me. So in the background here, the walls are painted um, in what might be described as a mural, but I also see it as sort of a set for the paintings um, as a way of, of sort of situating them in space, but also disrupting them in space. Um, and uh, the horizon that's kind of created in the background is thinking about both like the sort of valley and the sort of horizon line you see that kind of flows through Richmond and Vancouver and sort of like surrounds us, but is also very far from us. Uh, but it's also two bodies that are laying down and their feet kind of entwined. So, you know, the exhibition in a way is, is bringing together senses of scale of like our body to the land, uh, and how we might sort of situate ourselves within the natural or constructed environment. So giants in, in my work um, are both like a physical form in which I'm sort of using as a paint to paint as a subject. Um, and they, my initial interest in them came out of uh, some reading I was doing where capitalism, sort of contemporary forms of capitalism, were described as these sort of rotting corpses, these giants, uh, and that the, the, these corpses, when looked at individually as individual sort of like um, sections, so you couldn't see the giant because it was so large. You couldn't see capitalism falling apart. You couldn't see its its corpse rotting because we only ever looked at it in small sort of vignettes. Uh, but when you looked at it holistically as a whole, you, you could see the sort of framework of it failing. And I became really sort of interested in this idea of looking close, like this observation is a really important part of my work. So when you closely look at something, sometimes you lose sense of the things around it. Um, and I was doing a lot of research on how abstraction did this sort of Inherently is that when you look to abstract a form, uh, the subject itself, you start to leave things out because you're focusing on that which abstracts it. Um, and so the giant for me made a lot of sense. It was a similar, this metaphor of the giant was also used uh, historically in, uh, in the West, to sort of in Europe, um, 
kind of pre um, the enlightenment to discuss things that were unexplainable. So, um, you know, crop failures or earthquakes. Uh, the giant form was used as a means of describing um, how that, why that occurrence happened and how it occurred. And what I found really interesting is that the body used of the giant was still human. Um, and so we couldn't see its human form because of its scale, its shift upward, but we described it as a human form. And so it's always this like, is our inability to see things to exist outside of ourselves. So we always have to create these reasons that sort of center on self or center on this uh, idea of the human first. And so for me, bringing the giant in to then help describe scale and, and uh, these sort of like ways of looking at painting, but then also the natural world and our body made a lot of sense. Um, and so yeah, so in the show, I see there's like kind of two subjects taking a foothold, one being the giant, um, which is like finds its way in some of the paintings. It's you know, literally these like sort of uh, uh, gigantic heads or lips uh, or appendages or the hands that are floating about. Um, but also the, the mark making on, the, on the, the pigment, the rust and the blemish that's on in the paintings is also thinking about enlarging these blemishes that occur on a face or occur in like uh, decaying fruit. The show stems from years of research. Um, and I think as an artist, as you, at least as I research, one project kind of bleeds into the next and then that bleeds into the next and I never see it as like a a body of research and then it ends. I see it as like a body of research that leads to sort of more questions or it kind of like sort of extends and leaks out into other things. And because of that approach also I don't I don't feel like an artwork needs to be didactic or um, ex like explanatory of the research. I think that stems from um, a sort of uh, this idea that a research is a way of finding or resolving a problem, whereas artwork for me is about creating a problem or bringing together questions based on our sort of perceived notions of like how a resolve exists. Um, so for me, an artwork might, like should complicate the research. And so, and thus it's not all, it's not necessary for all the components to be visible. Because if they're all visible, then they start to answer themselves. Um, the exhibition itself is really about sort of revealing the sort of substructures of it. And sometimes that reveal uh, occurs in different ways, depending on the individual's knowledge of art history, or depending on their knowledge of maybe even the natural world, or the folklore of giants. And so it's really, I feel like in an exhibition that is about looking, um, but the sort of subtext of it is not necessary for that looking. And I think the images or maybe as con like complex as the research in a way, and that they sort of lend themselves to be looked at and hopefully sort of thought through, and then you go back into them and see them again. And even the way the exhibition, the way we sort of planned out the layout, myself and Amory, the curator, um, we we thought of the of moving through the Richmond space and then kind of going into the octagonal room and you come back out and you see it a second time. So you're kind of the idea is that you actually look at the exhibition in like a, a way that um, kind of lends to the images being read twice at different scales. So one from afar and then where you see the wall painting, the mural and the painting, and then one up close where you sort of see some of the detail uh, in the painting itself. Kind of reveal itself and maybe that's how the research works where for me you know there are moments of Rodin coming into the exhibition where I'm looking at Rodin's sculptures and how Rodin thought of sculpture as a as a sort of like optimal way of discussing or describing movement of a body um, and then that actually stemmed from thinking about the Baroque era of painting and how movement in the Baroque painting was trying to sort of like translate things like laughter or other or things like expression and, th and expression as translated through movement. So all these things sort of feed into the other. So one would ask, can you, do you have to look at Rodin through the lens of Baroque? And you know, it depends on what you want to look at through Rodin. So I would say that 
to understand Rodin's notion of movement in its purest form, then you have to look at the ideals of Baroque. And then to understand Baroque and Rodin, you probably have to look at sort of like um, ancient Greek sculpture and how movement was presented then. And to understand that, you should probably go back and look at other forms of sculpture. That And these things are all intertwined, but not necessary to experience the, the singular thing. So often I have no problem going over my research and like and talking about all the connections but in no way do I feel like it's necessary to like to read the work or to engage with it